Hello YouTube family, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you wherever you're watching from. I woke up this morning, I didn't even plan on doing any videos today, wasn't going to record any messages, but you know what? When you live in righteousness and you live in obedience to God, when the Holy Spirit tells you, do this, you just, you just do it. You don't ask questions. So that's my story this morning. You know, what I'm going to share with you guys today, I was really just reading the Bible, having my quiet time, and the Holy Spirit was like, you got to do this. It's going to help somebody. So in obedience, I'm going to do it, and I hope it gets to the person that this is meant for. So today I was just reading physici <laughs> physicians. <laughs> Don't mind me, I'm in healthcare, so physician is a regular thing for me. Anyway, today I was reading Ephesians chapter 6, and this is a passage I've read many times before, but I just got new revelations, and the Holy Spirit was like, share it, share it, share it. So Ephesians chapter 6 is what I want us to quickly look at, and I'm reading from my phone right here, and chap I think we'll start at verse 10. So Ephesians 6, verse 10, it says, finally... My brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. We're going to pause there for a minute. I decided to go and, and look at an in-depth definition of wiles. And I looked at the, the Hebrew and the Greek versions of it and its origin and all of that. And wiles, it's like just a cunningness, craftiness, trickery, trickery. <laughs> all of those things that are attributes of the devil. The other definition for a word wiles was something that's methodical. The devil is methodical in the way that he plans and gets us. He is not haphazard in his plans. He is crafty. The Bible tells us that already. He's crafty. He is someone who can trick you. You present something as if it's good, it's packaged well, but the inside of it, definitely not good. He will trick you. He's cunning. And he is not haphazard when he's trying to get you to fall. And the Bible is telling us here, put on the whole armor of God. This is the one thing that would make it possible for you to stand against this craftiness, the cunningness the trickery of the devil. You know, the Bible warns us in Psalms 90, 94, verse 20. It says, the kingdom of darkness plans its mischief by laws. So Satan is full of mischief. And th that mischief is what we fall for. And that leads to sin. And that's why the Bible is saying here, we should put on the whole armor of God in order for us to stand against that mischief. Verse 12, it tells us exactly what we're fighting. So many times have you, you know, come up against something and you, you don't, you have absolutely no idea what you're fighting. If you don't know what you're fighting, you're just throwing darts in the a, in a, in a dark and hoping something sticks. And that's just not a good strategy. So the Bible goes on, in verse 12 and says, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. And then it tells us what we're wrestling against, against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. When it talks about heavenly places, it's talking about the spiritual world, the spirit world. Some of us don't even believe that there's a spirit world. We think all that exists is just the physical world that we see. That is a lie from the devil. 
for we are not wrestling against flesh and blood. There's another version of the Bible that says you are wrestling people without bodies. That's spirits, principalities, powers, rulers of the darkness of this age, and spiritual hosts of wickedness. That is a hierarchy of the kingdom of darkness. Principalities are higher demons. And then you come down to powers and then the rulers and then, you know, spiritual hosts of wickedness, lesser demons. That's what our fight is against. And another thing that we can take from this verse right here is the fact that the law of God says that we're not fighting human beings. Therefore, what we can deduce from that is even if a human being is coming against you at work, in your life, you don't fight that human being themselves. You don't fight their flesh and blood. What you go against is you go on your knees in prayer and tackle that from a spiritual perspective because there's a spirit behind that person. The human form of that person, they're just a puppet and they're being used by principalities, by powers, by rulers of the darkness of this world. They've been manipulated against you. But once you go to fight, you don't fight the flesh. Once you start fighting that person in flesh, you have broken and breached God's principle. Because he clearly states here, our fight is not against human flesh and blood. We're fighting spirits. Keep that in mind. And verse 13 reiterates, therefore take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. What does it mean when something is repeated more than once? If you ever, if you have parents, you should know the meaning of this when something is repeated more than once. The same thing that the Bible says in verse 11, he's repeating it again in verse 13. Put on the whole armor of God so that you will be able to stand. When something is said more than once, it means it's very important. And the person who is saying it and repeating it wants you to get the point. And so in verse 14, it says, Stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, I just love the topic of righteousness because our whole journey, our whole life in Christ is hinged on righteousness. And it's unfortunate that righteousness is one of the things that everybody just brushes over. Not everybody, but you know, most, most churches don't even talk much about righteousness. Without righteousness, we can't gain much as children of God. I've said this before. When you look in the Bible at the promises of God and the things that he has promised and made available to us, all of those things are promised to the righteous. So it says, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and the breastplate goes from about your neck to about your navel. And it protects the important stuff right here. So righteousness, it's a shield that protects you. Because when you live righteous, it's kind of like a shield. Most times the devil gets to us when we breach the laws of God. And living a righteous life prevents you from sinning. And without sin, the devil does not have a hold on you. And then it says, having shot your feet, with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Always be ready to share that gospel of peace, to take it to, to other people. What you know, you share it with other people. It's going to help somebody else. The same way somebody else probably shared and it made a difference in your life. Always be ready to win souls for Christ. It says, above all, taking the shield of faith 
with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked ones. Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the evil one. The devil is throwing darts at you constantly. That is happening in the spirit. And what's going to quench those darts? The shield of faith. And what's the shield of faith? It's the word of God. You defend yourself with the word of God. I would say I encourage you to get in the word. Know the word of God for yourself. Don't rely on somebody else to read the Bible and regurgitate it to you. They could be misleading you. You can't even lean on me. I'm a human being. I, I could be misleading you. I could have a warped understanding. You read it for yourself and you seek interpretation from the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth. He'll never tell you a lie. But if you don't know your Bible, how are you going to quench the fiery darts that are being thrown at you constantly? Something to think about. Pick up your Bible, read it, know it, use it to defend yourself. Verse 17 says, and take the helmet of salvation. Put on the helmet of salvation. Protect your head. Your head is where the most important stuff resides and is your thinking faculties. And that's the thing where you know that you have been saved. So hold on to that salvation. Put on a helmet that tells you that Jesus Christ died on the cross for you and brought you salvation. You are saved. You are no longer condemned and you are a child of God. Verse 17 goes on to say, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The word of God is the sword that we use. You have your helmet, you have your breastplate, you've girded your loins, you've shrouded your feet in the gospel of peace. And now you need your sword. If you're in a fight and you don't have a sword, even though you may have the other elements of your armor, if you don't have your sword, which is your weapon, it's not going to do you any good. And I love this because Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit. The word of God is sharp. That is your sharp sword that you have in your hand. And all of those spirits, those evil spirits that get attached to your soul, those marine spirits, those spirit spouses, the spirit of fear, that sword, which is the word of God, is the only sword that can cut and pierce and divide your soul from that evil spirit. That's what the Bible says in Hebrews chapter four, verse 12. What did I tell you before? You gotta know the Bible. You gotta know the Bible for yourself so that when things are coming at you, when things have attached themselves to you, you can undo them and you can only do so by the word of God. And then verse 18, where we're going to stop, says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Being watchful, being prayerful. The thing that frustrates me is how us Christians are okay with everything in the world. Are we watching? Are we praying? We embrace everything. You go to churches and they do Halloween and they say, oh, we're going to Christianize Halloween. There is no Christianizing Halloween. Halloween is a demonic thing. But yeah, the church has to embrace that too. And the funny thing is you don't see the world embracing the things of the church. We are not being good watchmen, but the Bible is telling us here, always pray. And you don't, you don't have to always go in a closet to pray. 
I, I pray when I'm doing anything. When I'm working, I pray. When I go for a walk with my son, I'm praying as I push him in a stroller. I have a young son, so I don't even have a ton of time to um, sit down and have quiet time. But I find time. And even when I'm, I'm at, a sto- at the stove making his food, I'm praying. I wake up in the middle of the night when he's fast asleep and I go and pray. Sometimes I wake up earlier than he does and I go and pray. Why? Because God says we should always be praying and being watchful because the devil is crafty. If you're not watchful, he's going to take you. And we have to practice perseverance. I think that's one of the things that sometimes Christians lack. Anyway, guys, I just wanted us to look at this verse about arming ourselves, putting on the whole armor of God, and also being aware of who we're fighting and what we're fighting. I encourage you to go back and read Ephesians 6 uh, by yourself and just meditate upon it and ask for a deeper revelation of this passage. I think it's a wonderful uh, passage. I think this is a passage that has incredible revelation about a spiritual warfare. If you're a Christian and you don't believe that this is spirit world, you are doing yourself such a disservice. The things that we see in the physical world, they were conjured up in the spirit world. There is a real spirit world. That's a whole nother teaching for you, for me to give you guys evidence so that you believe that there's a spirit world. But believe me, the world that we see is not as real as the spirit world. Remember what Paul said. Paul told the church of Corinthians, he said, do not set your eyes on the physical things, but set your eyes on the spiritual things because the physical things are always changing. This is just a secondary thing that we see. The real thing is in the spiritual world, which is complex and we don't understand it well and all, but it is there. That's all I have for you guys today. I hope that had been a blessing to you. Make sure you please subscribe and follow along for the journey.